Sitting passively in school, in a training seminar, or even just watching YouTube videos and being fed information is not actually the best way to learn. Studies have shown that hands-on, interactive, and engaged learning is far more effective at helping us learn new things. But wait, 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 don't go just yet and run away. There are some things that you can learn by watching this video, and I think that you'll enjoy knowing about these things and even trying out once you've watched the video. Make sure to watch to the end of the video because I'll be asking you to actually do something at the end, which I believe will be something that helps you be a more efficient teacher, trainer, student, learner, all of these things. We will break into a world of action with a little bit of help. Let's say we want to learn or teach something. Maybe we're passionate about a subject and we want to share that passion with others. It's easy for us to lecture and share our passion or read and watch others talk about our passion, but does it actually help us learning the material that we're experiencing? And the answer to that is a short answer, ness, which is no and yes at the same time. There are some value in seeing and hearing about something, which is pretty much what my entire YouTube channel is about, sharing my passion for learning and technology with you, but it's also important to elevate your learning by doing things with the learning. For example, taking an action like hitting the like button. That's interactive, very satisfying, and you know what, go ahead and give it a try. Hit that like button. So, but beyond that, it is important when I'm creating these videos that you do the things that I show you in the video so that you can learn them. And that's the whole idea, that if you watch a video, you learn. And we're gonna talk about that right now. When we study and teach, we wanna create interactivity into the things that we're learning and teaching. We wanna, we wanna add variety, we wanna add interactivity, we wanna mix things up. So what can we do? Well, here's a cool way that we can get ideas for transforming our learning into interactive activities. It's called the Transform Deck. And I'm a big fan of decks. If you've seen any of my live streams, you may have seen live streams where I talk about critical thinking decks and creative thinking decks and decks on storytelling tactics and workshop tactics and team tactics. In fact, I'm a huge fan of different types of decks, but the Transform deck is fast becoming one of my favorite decks to use. I've used this digitally and I also have the physical desk. It's from a company called untoldplay.com. Let's go take a look. The Transform deck is a great deck. I really like this for getting different ideas of how I can spice up my training. So if I go in, at the Transform deck has oversized cards, which is really nice. They're, they're a real handful, so they're, they're excellent in that regard. They're well-built cards, they're durable, so I, I can use them quite a bit. I have the instructions here. So you'll have the instructions, the start here, the welcome, and then there are a number of activities. We'll look at each of these sections in a moment. Then we have the assess cards, then we have the arrange cards, then we have the create cards in order to create inspiring prompts and such, then we have the solve cards, then we have the apply cards. So you can see that we have a whole bunch of different sections here. So we have number of different sections and what happens is with the instructions you'll get information and you can use it with any content that you might have in your classroom and on the back of the cards will be instructions on how to use the card. Then there are specific activities so here's a how to. We do a pick a card activity. It's a beginner level activity and we can create combinations. We can So there's a number of different activities beginner level, intermediate level and then all the way up to more of an expert level or an advanced level as well. So there are a number of different ways to use the cards that are all communicated in the welcome set, the gray set. We have pros and cons. Activities like having learners think about and listing the pros and cons of various options. And you can see an example and some tips on how to build that interactive activity. Then at the bottom, you can also see that there's cards that complement this card. So for example, this is card number one. So you can see it's card number one. So a card that works well with this is card three, four, 13. So I could see that I have the pros and cons. I could do ranking. I could then do identify with one. So we have these activities, and on the back of the cards, it explains the activity, right? So there's an example in building the activity. I could then continue on and have card number 13 here, which in this case here is the card slot, and so on throughout the different cards, 
card number 20 brainstorm and this creates a real interactive map if you would of how I can build a more comprehensive set of activities to support whatever it is that I'm wanting to teach or what that I'm wanting to learn. As a learner these cards are great because what I can do is I can just even randomly put the, a card on the table and explore whatever topic I'm studying using that card. So for example let's say I wanted to you know study something like I don't know uh, some biological principle or maybe I want to study computers or something. I could just go in here randomly grab a card, doesn't matter what card I grab, and I could apply in stages. So I would apply tool technique in stages and I review after each stage. So there's a reason for this is to encourage working in stages. I can control and pace and focus on each and I'll get a example and some tips of how to do that. So the cards themselves are great for interacting with knowledge, interacting with activities in order to form knowledge, and it's something that I highly recommend to anyone who wants to be more successful in adding more interactivity and doing into the work that you're learning. You can also get an app called Deckable, which is for your phone, where you can get digital copies of the deck as well. That's really handy if you just want to have it in your pocket and you might not want to carry the physical deck with you, but I do like carrying these around quite a bit. It's a great way to inspire and elevate our learning and teaching, and whether physical or, or, or digital, they do provide a great way to have inspiration and variety in what we're doing. Now you can build your own decks. You can use index cards, and I'm not talking about just flashcards for reviewing, although that can be handy as well. I'm talking more about decks with methodologies and ideas that you can shuffle through and you can try out to create variety and create some sort of, uh, you know, randomized, randomized structure into your class, if, if that's even a thing. But the idea is that these types of decks are super helpful at the transform deck from untoldplay.com is great. The deckable app is great too. I'll put links down below for those. And I'm interested if you're using any decks. Do you have any decks that you use for learning and teaching? And if so, do you make your own? Or do you have ones that you've gone out and purchased? And I'd be interested to know what they are. I'm always looking for new exciting decks that I can, you know, uh, get into and learn and, and work with and do all sorts of cool things with. So comment down below if you are a deck user, if you're planning on using decks in the future, and if you're currently uh, using any decks and what they might be. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.